I'd like to share this, uh, this topic called Embracing Timeless Wisdom of Dharma. Okay? The word here, uh, the key word here is timeless. Uh. Despite a long sentence of containing big words like wisdom and dharma. Right? So focus on this word, timeless. Okay? So, um, just now when you came in, I heard you chanting. Chanting the uh, Ti Ratana Vandana, right? Buddha Dhamma Sangha. So I heard chanting like Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditiko Akaliko Ehi Pasiko Opanariko Pachatang Veditabo Vinyuhiti. How many of you chant since you know the Dhamma? I know some of you have been chanting for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I know. Every single word you know or not? So if I, if I ask, if I come to ask some of, some of you to say that, can you describe to me, let's say for instance, the word Sanditiko, you know or not? So you, you chant, you chant for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, automatically it comes up from your mouth, correct or not? Huh? The Tiratana Vandana. But if I were to ask you, break down that verse and explain to me word by word what it means, I think you have very much difficulty. <laughs> much difficult. That is, that is our issue. Alright? We learn, we are Buddhists, we say we learn the Dharma, we practice Dharma, but when we want to reflect what we actually learn, many of us don't really know. Okay? So today, I go into just one word. Okay? One word. You already chanted just now. This morning, I heard it. Okay, the word is called akaliko. Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo. Sanditiko akaliko. Okay? It's like to you it's like just it's a word that, that goes by, you know. Akalo, akaliko means the word timeless. Alright? Timeless. Okay? And this will relate to how you experience Dharma in your everyday life. It is like to you it's maybe just a word, you know. But if you understand the word, truly understand, huh? I'm not just saying understand on the surface, truly understand, and you will appreciate how this Dharma that is timeless impact you at every moment of your life. Okay? Right, so without delay, I will go into it. Lah. This is going to be a bit technical, this particular Dharma talk, okay? Because I think if I keep on talking a basic Dharma, I think some of you may be quite bored. So I want to, today, I want to teach you how to pick a lock. You know, pick a lock. That means you, you get yourself locked outside the house. You don't, you don't have the key to go inside. I, I teach you how to open the door with just a pin, right? It's called, it's not good actually, you know? But it's a trick. I will, I will give you some ideas how you can actually pick, pick a locker on Dharma and unlock, you know, nuggets of wisdom, all right? Uh, I've decided every time I give a Dharma sharing, I want you to fact check me. Don't just take what I say, right? You can go to, say, uh, nobu-ai.org, it's, uh, it's in your handphone, and uh, ask any question and fact check me, right? Um, as, as a, one of the person who developed Nobu, I find that many of uh, people who are using Nobu don't ask good questions. Uh, that's another issue I have with Buddhists. They ask very basic questions. It shows the level of our education in Dharma. All right? The best people who ask good questions are those from the Tibetan group. Ask, they ask very deep questions because they have a system to study. They have a system called the Nalanda tradition. They, they study it very well. For the Theravada the tradition, we anyway how we learn Dharma anyway how one depend on teacher. Okay, so if you're not sure, fact check. Always fact check. The Buddha said, do not accept what the teacher said. Do not accept what he said. Do not accept what the sutra said. Correct, or not? Except after you listen to it, you practice it. And then, if it's good for you, then you accept. That is in the Kalama Sutta. Huh? So don't, don't just blindly accept anyone. Just because he's a monk, he's a wise teacher, you yourself must put into practice. If it's good for you, 
then no need to accept. It's good for you already. You just use it. Correct? So please fact check me. Huh? Okay. Today's talk, uh, embrace timeless wisdom of Dharma, there's uh, two elements. Uh, right? One, I want to use the word timeless. It's called akaliko. Right? Akaliko, timeless. If there's something that is timeless, right, there must be something that is not timeless. Correct or not? Otherwise, why we want to pursue the Dharma? We have problems, but we have our own personal problems, we have issues to face in life. That is why we search for Dharma, to look for solution. Correct or not? Right? So if the Dharma is timeless, then there must be something uh, that is not timeless. And what is that? It's called samsara. We are all in the samsara. Samsara means uh, in the cycle of life and death, birth and rebirth. You know, rising a problem and ending a problem. Again and again and again, we are in this cycle. We want to get out of this cycle. Right? And we are trying to find out how we can get out of this cycle. That's why we look for Dharma. Okay? Now, this cycle is called the samsara, samsaric factors. Huh? <clears throat> now, your problem huh, don't come up by itself, you know. You have done something, all of us, including myself. We have done something. Maybe it's a thought, maybe it's an idea, maybe some creativity inside our mind. Because of our thought, we're going to take action on it. When we take action of it, there is effect. There is a result. Correct or not? Whether the result good or bad, we don't know. But we try to do good things so they can produce good result. But not necessary, but if your intention is good, everything good, but someone take it wrongly, you know. Someone take it as though like, ah yeah, why you do that? Right? And then create problem for you. So not necessary, even you got good intention, good action. But somebody perceive it differently. And the result could be not exactly what you want. Also, this can cause misunderstanding, miscommunication. And then you have problem. Right? So it's called manifestation. Things that you do, it manifests. It becomes something or something else. Alright? To your liking or not to your liking. And then it, it, it's, it's a condition phenomena. Condition means uh, got cause and got effect. When you do something, it's a cause. Alright? Then it results in something else. Nothing comes up by itself. One. Everything must do something, then there's a result. Cause and effect, cause and effect. Alright? That is called the word condition phenomenon. And because of all these factors, you create dukkha, anicca, anatta. You know, the unsatisfactoriness, impermanence, and non-self. This is a characteristic of life. Okay? This kind, this, this, this kind of uh, things uh, is also called timeless. As long as you do not make effort to get out of it, this thing will come again and again and again. And then you ask yourself, why my life got so much problem? Why my life uh, not smooth? Even you don't have big problem, your life is not smooth. To you also a problem, correct or not? Some of you are waiting for become rich for years. Coming already, coming, never come. No problem. You still got job, you still got house, everything got. But that particular last minute uh, win uh, cannot come. Then you say not smooth, life is not smooth. Then you feel not good also. Right? And then you, you strive to get it. Then cannot get, ah, never mind. But that word never mind uh, is like resigned to it already. Uh, but not satisfactory one, you know. Right? So, these two points here, okay? The Dharma is there for you always to solve your problem. Right? Akaliko. Always looking for it, one, but you don't know how to use it. That is the issue. Just now I mentioned just now, you know how to chant, but you don't know the meaning. Correct? That means you know the Dharma, you, you hear it only, but you don't know how to use it. Huh? You don't know how to use it to solve your Issue, the Dukkha Anicca Anatta. <coughs> so today, uh, I want to teach you how to pick a lock. Go inside, find out uh, what is your problem. All right? You can see your problem yourself very clearly, and then you, you apply the Dharma in your own way. <coughs> there is no one method to, to solve your problem. Okay? Some, some, uh, some teachers will say, this is the way. 
this one way is the way. How can? I ask you all to make egg, uh, fry egg. Simple, simple learning, right? Fry egg, crack egg, put in the hot pan and fry. I tell you, uh, I think half of you come out with different taste one. The egg tastes different one. Same process, same, same method, same egg. Okay, but how come taste different? Some of you put different kind of spice, some of you different kind of sauce. Egg is different. Some of you cook too long, some of you cook too short. Correct or not? There is no one way, I'm telling you. There is no one way. The one way is what is suits you. What suits you? You have to find out for yourself what suits you. Otherwise, uh, you tell me, how come we got thousands of sutras? sutras? If there's one way, uh, there should be only one or two sutta, correct or not? The Buddha will talk this sutta again and again and again and again. Same sutta. But no! You have Moggallana. Huh? Uh, Kasi Bawaraja sutta. You got Metta sutta. You got Mangala sutta. Millions of sutta. Right. Why? Because when the, what sutta means what, you know? Sutta means Ananda remember I just use an example, Ananda, like, could be other people hearing what the Buddha said. Lah. Ananda remember what the Buddha said to someone else. Alright, he remember, then he recite back, so that the monks remember, oh, this is what Buddha said to this person. And then they call it a sutta. Okay? You must understand that sutta pitaka not one, one book like Bible or Quran. Or, have you seen the sutta pitaka? I think the, as, as white as this here to there. So many books, you know, including commentaries. Why so many suttas? Because the Buddha, when he meets someone, he teach according to that person's requirement. Right? The problem was, his teaching was limited to his lifetime. He only taught for 45 years. So imagine he lived for 1,000 years. The sutta, I think, uh, filled out this whole room already. Correct or not? By that logic, lah. Okay, so when we say Dharma teaching, we must not say this is the way, this is the only way, this is the true way, this is the pure way. Purity, truth is depend on you, not the teacher. If the thing applies to you, good, well and good, use it. Okay, but only one thing remains: the Buddha's Dharma is timeless. Okay, let's break down one by one. Uh. Akaliko means no bound by time, all right? No bound by time. And just now I already mentioned to you uh, the six qualities, right? The qualities of the one. Swakato, uh, what? Sanditiko, Akaliko, Ehipasiko, Opanariko, Pachatang, Veditabo, Vinyuhiti. This particular slide I will share with the committee. You can get from the, the committee, right? <coughs> This is the Dharma that you're learning, you know. Okay? When you say Dharma, oh, one word only. But Dharma means all this. Well taught by the Buddha. Okay? That is effective immediately. When you apply the practice, uh, immediately it is effective. No delay. No delay. When you're angry, you sit down, take the breath, count the, count, count the breath. In, out, in, out. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Your anger disappear or not? Will disappear. Your heart beat slower or not? Yes, it will slow down. Correct or not? If you apply, you will see immediate result. But you must apply. You must practice. Okay? Akaliko means timeless. Ehipasiko means for you to come and see. We don't go and preach to other religion. You come. You come and see. If you like it, you take it. Right? No, no, no force. Then there is called the Opanayiko, which is leading onwards. The moment you practice, there is no turning back. No tui ho. Ah. It's only onwards, going forward. You can only become a better person. Okay? Things like your anger can be reduced, your, your irritation can be reduced, uh, what call this? Ah? Your procrastination also can be reduced, maybe, I don't know. Different people, different one. There's no such thing as, I'm Buddhist, huh? we're all Buddhists, huh? we go towards the same way. But your little path and my path are all different one. 
Okay. Um, I am a less angry person example. Then another person, uh, always very lazy, take long time to do things. Want to start something, never mind tomorrow. It's called pro pro procrastination. Okay. So he, he's got a, he or she got a different problem. Uh, then you have to look at the issue and then use a different method of Dharma to solve it. My method is anger or two, maybe too little anger. Everything okay, everything very kind and people take advantage of me. Also cannot, correct or not? Uh, so you have to apply for another aspect of Dharma. Then the last one, Pachata Meditabo Vinyuhiti, the means personally experienced by the wise. This kind of thing, the Dharma is, nobody can purify you. You must experience the Dharma for yourself. From yourself, you bloom. From yourself, the enlightenment comes. There is nothing external that can uh, help you become somebody else except yourself. Okay? Remind, remember that, you know. There's a big difference between the Buddhism and other the, the Abrahamic religion. Change must come from you. Purity must come from you. You can only listen to people telling you what to do. If it is good, you use it. If it is not good, avoid. But what you accept and you put you must put in the practice and see for yourself the change happened to you is good or not. Monitor yourself, be mindful. Once you see that it is good, it is useful, it helps me, it helps my people, uh, helps me to handle people around me, then practice diligently, continue. Okay? That is why it's called timeless, this Dharma. Because this kind of advice, uh, during Buddha time, 2,600 years ago, and now it's the same, the effect is the same. Whether you've got technology, got internet, no internet, got website or no website, you know, got apps or AI, no AI, doesn't matter. You have aeroplane, no aeroplane, doesn't matter. But that, that Dharma is timeless. Okay? It is effective for one who's riding on a bullock cart. Equally effective for one who is also driving a Mercedes. Right? The issue here is, Methodology. The word is called methodology. When you write a bullock card, means what? You get from A, point A to point B in a transportation mode called bullock card with a cow and a, and a cart behind, right? But it's still transportation from point A to point B. Now you got better roads, you got your Mercedes, it is still point A to point B. I said that you do it more efficiently and faster, right? So the methodology change factors that you use to live change. The principle is the same. The principle is the same, okay? The Dharma, when you say timeless, uh, doesn't mean just like, oh, no, here a, a thousand years ago also effective, today also effective, in next thousand years also effective. But it is more important, it is effective immediately. The moment you calm yourself down, you see a change yourself in yourself. Immediately, you don't need to believe in a God. You just calm down. Be mindful. You know, breathe in, breathe out. No need religion. You just do that five minutes and see what happened to you. Immediately, you can sense the change. Okay? There is a saying, you know, uh, when you have uh, boiling water, can you drink or not? This water I can drink. I boil it, I boil it, boil, uh, boiling. I cannot drink this water. But give it 30 minutes when it's cool down. Can drink or not? Can. This Dhamma. When you're angry, uh, please don't talk to people. If you've a husband or wife, that person is angry, avoid talking. Alright? Just say sadu sadu and then go walk away. Okay. Let it calm down first. Because when you talk to angry people, it's like drinking hot water. You only burn yourself. Seriously, don't, okay? When people boiling hot, nah, don't go near. Leave it be. Give it some time, everything will be okay, right? 
not only that, not only is it uh, effectively immediately, it is also ever fresh on. Ever fresh, you know, can you believe it or not? A thing that cannot rot on this Dharma. Akaliko, timeless means ever fresh. Because you see in another way, in a different circumstances. Okay? And then suddenly you realize, oh, is it like that? Huh? Oh, suddenly your mind changed already. Right? Ever fresh, because the proof, the truth cannot age one, the truth cannot grow old. Alright? And once you practice that, you have immediate understanding. Immediately, I'm telling you. Okay? No delay. Immediately. This is a. Uh, <clears throat> when, when people ask me, you know, especially with uh, uh, evangelists, uh, Christian evangelists come after, come after us uh, sometimes. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. I have not been to school for a long time. So nobody has convert, trying to convert me for years already. When I was young, a lot of people come, uh, you know, the Christians will come. And then uh, there are one thing, they're very good. They say, oh, your Buddha died already. Cannot save you. Okay, your Buddha died already. Our Jesus never died, you know. He died, yes, but he got res resurrected. He went to heaven. And then he's like magic. Now uh, he's everywhere because he became son of God. Correct or not? But your Buddha died already, you know. Cremate some more. They show you the picture. Buddha cremation. Become what? Ash already. Because the Buddha said, what? Non-self. Anatta. Anicca. Suffering. Burn. Gone. The problem with us Buddhists is we don't understand. We say, ah, we don't know how to explain. Okay? We don't know how to explain. Right? But the, the one, the, 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 the Christian will say, you know the Jesus? He comes there. When you pray at night, he come, you know, hug me, you know. Put the hand uh, on me. Nowadays, uh, they got this Jesus uh, putting hand on Donald Trump, uh, correct or not? Because he didn't die, uh, shot him, didn't die. And that kind of imagery, you know. And, and, and people tend to believe easily because uh, they know how to bring up this, this kind of emotional story. We Buddhists, oh, let go, detach, disembark, no more. How to explain? And that is why I'm saying, this word akaliko is so important. Why the word akaliko is important? Because Dharma is timeless. Dharma come from where? Come from who? The Buddha. The Buddha is dead. The Buddha is gone. But one thing remain his Dharma. Correct or not? In the Dhammapada, it says, the Dharma is like a fragrance that goes against the wind, you know. The wind blows this way. The fragrance of Dharma go opposite and cut through that wind and go opposite direction, all, all around. There's a fragrance of Dharma. So if the Christian come and say to me, Jesus can hold you on your shoulder when you're sad. I will say, can you smell some fragrance in the room or not? I can smell beautiful fragrance in the room. Huh, what fragrance? Cannot smell like you. You say, oh, you must believe in Jesus that he can hold you. Then I say, you cannot smell the fragrance means you cannot see the Dharma yet. Correct or not? I can smell so beautiful. You cannot smell sure. We, we, we talk like that. But before we talking like that, you must know the basic, you must know in that. What it means by timeless. Okay? Timeless means uh, the Dharma must live through you, 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 in your heart, all of you here. Then you share. If the Dharma dies in your heart, there's no Dharma in this world. Dharma must be in our heart. We bring his fragrance inside here and then we share. Okay? When we share, it becomes fragrant Dharma. The Dharma that heal, the Dharma that bring peace, the Dharma that bring harmony. That kind of Dharma. And you know this kind of Dharma, this is the quality you're talking about. Cannot age, ever fresh. Huh? What else? Immediately effective. Correct or not? You are doing this, you know. Alright? So when you say akaliko, it's not just timeless. It is all this. And better still, you when you chant the Sokato Bhagavata Dhammo, Sanditiko Akaliko Ehi Pasiko Upanaiko, Pachata Veditabo Vinyo Hiti, you know the meaning in full? That's the total fragrance of the Dharma. 
The Buddha never died. The Buddha died physically, but his presence is still here through his Dharma. Before he died, Ananda asked him, what shall we do? He had gone. The Buddha said, I'm not, I'm not gone totally. I leave the Dharma with you. This is your heir, H-E-I-R. You are heir of the Dharma. Okay? You plant the seed in your heart. Your next generation, if you can give them become Buddhist, they continue. And that's how you bring up the Akaliko. Now, this Akaliko is timeless. Ah, all right? It's everywhere. The Dharma is everywhere. Except that we don't know how to capture it and use it for ourselves. All right? So, we have to look at ourselves now. Huh? Because we have an area full of samsara, all of us. Otherwise, yeah, we won't be looking for Dharma. Correct or not? We won't be sitting down here listening to Dharma talk. Bow down to this statue called Buddha. If you have no problem, come for what? Right? Enlightened already, what? no need. But because we are not enlightened, we are human beings, we have problems. Once a week, we try to solve our problem, hopefully. Right? So we come and listen to Dharma talk. Okay, so you listen to me. Right? So now I'm telling you, Dharma is ever, everywhere. But it's no use. Dharma everywhere, no use. Man. Water everywhere, but correct or not? Can you drink all the water or not? You cannot. You need a container to capture the water so that you can drink. And you cannot drink all the water in the life. Cannot. You die, correct or not? You can die of drinking too much water, you know or not? Huh? So you drink what's, what's required for a day. Right? So you capture in a container. So, uh, samsara is not a bad thing, you know. Samsara help you uh, identify your problem. Okay? Samsara means uh, condition, phenomena are bounded by time. Uh, just not the word dharma, timeless, correct or not? But your samsara uh, is according to you, according to the situation one. And this samsara uh, can come and go, uh, correct or not? Today, this problem. Tomorrow, that problem. Another day, another problem. Today, the problem you cause one. Another day, somebody cause for you. So, the, that your samsara is ever happening, correct? But the manifestation of this samsara at any point of time, it depends on a situation in a context. Correct? I think many of you are working, correct or not? Then you should go office politics. Some people, your boss hate you, la. supervisor don't like you, la. give you a problem. Sometimes you got good friends, suddenly become enemy already. Right? Or sometimes maybe your family member suddenly change. You don't know what to do. Right? And maybe you cannot accept the change. You try to not make the person, uh, uh, try not to tell the person. You try to tell, tell the person, hey, please don't change. Cannot, well. the guy changed already. What you can do? Example, like maybe the guy become Christian. Your son or daughter become Christian. Like, and you, as a mother or father, don't want. How? Correct or not? These are issues, you know. Right? These are issues. So these are bounded by time. Now, samsara, the difference between samsara and uh, dharma is, it is bounded by time. Okay? Bounded by a situation. And... Um, Let's break down the word. Lah. Just now I saw this word, right? This is a big word. Lah. Big word. Lah, huh? I think many of you, if you cannot even understand Akaliko, no need to understand this. Okay? But I want to break down for you, right? And this is where, just now I show you the robot, lah, Nobu. Lah. It's very good for this kind of thing. Man. If you have a sentence like that, don't understand, lah, you ask, you know, please break down this sentence into parts and explain to me lah, uh, what it means. Okay, so what happened is that I got this kind of sentence. I asked the Nobu, break it down into parts. So what happened? It become like this. What is a samsaric factor? Okay, what is samsaric factor? Samsaric factor means refer to samsara, the cycle of rebirth and rounds of death, uh, rounds of existence in, in Buddhism. Okay, the factors are the elements and all conditions that contribute to your samsara. What are the things that contribute to your samsara? Only you know. Okay, your boss, your supervisor, your wife, your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, only you know. Okay? Is it them or you? Only you know. And some the problem is you don't even know. 
Who is contributing the problem? And that creates new, more problem. All right? That is the issue. We don't even know ourselves. We blame the world. That's the easiest way out. Lah. Blame everybody except yourself. All right? So the samsaric factors are the condition that keeps us being trapped in this cycle. Round and round we go, we, cannot, we don't know how to escape. Okay? We, we have to learn how to escape. Alright? We have to learn how to escape. But first, we have to do that. To do that, we have to know ourselves. Honestly, uh, sincerely. Not superficially. Okay? I'm not saying you're superficial. Because in the beginning, I said you all know how to chant, but don't know the meaning. Correct or not? It shows that we don't know ourselves really well, you know. If we know ourselves, uh, we know exactly what we are chanting. Correct? So we start by knowing first. And that is called sincerity and honesty. When we say the word, when we mention something, we mean it. We know exactly what it means. We know. Alright? So don't just do things nominally. Lah. We mean it because it will show us in our character. Because when we really know it, lah, when we talk to somebody else, lah, they also know we know. Then they won't disturb us. A long time ago, right? All my Christian cousins will come and try to convert me. All. Without fail. They could be a, a Presbyterian, Methodist, Protestant, or whatever. So many denominations. They come and tell me, hey, Afong. They call me Afong. Kui Fong. Voila, you, you're a good person. You know, unfortunately, I want, I want you to be with me, go to heaven. I said, brother, I see you on earth enough already. <laughs> Okay? I say, why, why you say like that? You, when you come and see me, only talk about God. Why can't we just have a drink, have a good time? Don't talk about God, can or not? I want you to follow me to heaven and listen to you talk about God some more. No, enough. Okay? Enough, I said. That was before they know that I, had, I, was, I was a Dharma speaker. Lah. One day, I moved to a new house. I brought all my Christian brothers, uh, cousins, to my house. Purposely because I had a beautiful library. 2,000 books of Buddhist books, you know. Very rare collection. Okay, I've been collecting for years. Then they came to my house and say, you read all this, ah? not only read, memorize. Oh, after that, they don't call me anymore. Because they know, they sure do. they can lose. Not sure, they can lose. The moment they know, this person is a bit untouchable, forget it, don't waste your time. So what they do? They pick low-hanging fruits like you all. Lah. Don't know how to answer one. Okay? So what I'm saying is, if you know your Dharma good enough, nobody come and disturb you. Seriously. Okay? So don't be a nominal Buddhist, you know. Nominal means you know how to chant, you know the sound. Automatically come out. Parrot also can do, I'm telling you. Okay? You... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't mean to call you guys better, but, but the point is this, you have to know the meaning. What is Dharma? What is Buddha? Today, I only use one word, Akaliko. Okay? You chant it hundreds of times already, I know. But why we don't know? Because when we don't know, we don't know how to solve this issue, samsara. Okay? We don't know how to solve this issue. And then there's another word here, manifested. Manifested means what? It become. It reveal, it become, you know, all right. In this context, that the samsara factors are observable and evident. That means you can see one. You can feel the anger. You can feel the frustration. You can feel the irritation. Huh? You can feel the like something missing. Can feel one. Can know one. Can make you angry. Can make you frustrated. Can make you cannot sleep. Insomnia. These are called evident. You can know, and yet you don't know how to handle it. You get what I mean? Uh? Huh? So manifest means uh, your samsara is manifested one, you know. Can, you can know it one, right? It's not something that you cannot hold. You cannot, you can. It can be expressed in another person. The person don't know how to, how to help or himself or herself. Then you try to help, and you get caught in the situation, right? So it, it is a manifestation. But the problem becomes, bigger problem is, when you don't know how to solve the problem because you don't know yourself. 
It's like a fire, you go and add more petrol into it, more kerosene, become worse. Because you don't know that the kerosene is inflamed the fire. Okay? So, samsara manifested in the called conditioned phenomena. Condition means uh, dependent or influenced by other factors. Alright? It is an observable event that is conditioned by another factor. There is a cause and there's an effect. All right? Things arise depending on cause and condition, but they are impermanent. That is why your problem today becomes big problem, tomorrow becomes no problem. How come? Just give time. Correct or not? Hot boiling water becomes cold water you can drink. Just give time. That's why everybody say, just give time, everything is soft. But if you don't know that advice, you keep on holding to the problem, whole life also it won't get solved. I've seen people die. Handsome people, young people, beautiful people. When they die, uh, very ugly. Why? I found out that before they, that person died, uh, she, she was holding a grudge. Very big grudge. Cannot let go one. Very angry because she cannot forgive what the other person did to her. Until die, also like that. You can show in the face, you know. So the cops, uh, actually, uh, it will tell you uh, what is the situ situation of your last thought. Okay? The last thought. If he's sick, okay, la, cannot help. La. But if a reasonably healthy person, no accident, la, no accident or no sudden death, of let's say a terrible accident, and the last moment thought is an ugly one, it shows in your face, in the color of the body and all. That's why the, the last thought moment before you anyone dies uh, is very important. Okay? So, because of all these things come together, the samsaric factor manifested in condition phenomenon is in the form of dukkha, anicca, anatta. Dukkha, anicca, anatta are the three characteristics of all condition phenomena. All your life, uh, all your problem, all your happiness, no happiness, fame and gain, you know, fame and ill fame, gain and loss, all these are. Uh, uh, done by the eight winds is this thing called dukkha anicca anatta. Okay. When we put together, it means what? It means that the factors that keep you being trapped in the cycle of rebirth are evident and observable. Things that make you unhappy, happy, make you sad, uh, make you uh, frustrated, you know, delighted. All this is observable one. You can know one. You can see one. Alright? And these things arise due to cause and condition. Right? These condition phenomena are then characterized by the three, three key features. They are Dukkha, Anicca, and Anatta. Alright? Without Samsara, you will never search for the Dharma. So to me, uh, Samsara is actually useful. Lah. And that is why the Buddha said, Buddhism, the Dharma, can only appear in the human realm. Because the human uh, is able to experience pain, suffering. Only when you, ex you know how to have the mind to know, to know uh, that you are having this problem, you search for a solution. The other realms don't have this ability. That's why human life uh, is so precious. Because you have this opportunity to heal yourself. Okay? But Buddhism requires you to do your work yourself. Lah. There's some people are not strong. So like the Christian said, your Buddha leave you alone, you know. Ask you to do the thing yourself. Carry the weight yourself. When you need help, uh, Die already. The Buddha gone. Dharma only fragrant. <laughs> Smell can help you, uh, right? But the Jesus, no. Jesus hold you, you know, like that. Like that, you know. Like that. You need help. That's why we must have Sangha. When we bow down to the triple gem, means what? Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Sangha means what? Not only monk or nun, you know. Fellow upasaka upasika, layman, laywoman, who are learned dhammas, uh, dhamma, da, uh, who are learned in the dhamma. They are called kaya namita, spiritual friends. 
You must have this kind of people who help you to walk along the path. Buddhism has given the solution, except that we just lazy. I use the word lazy, okay? To go and search. All right? The Christians are very good at searching and forming all these, uh, this called cell groups lah, and all this kind of thing, you know, to give support. We come in also, nobody greet you, correct? Not? Bow down three times, statue, so they will say hello to you. After chanting, listen, Dhamma talk, go back. You, while you're driving, you think about this brother Lima, he said, ah, correct lah, true lah, that's it lah. Go back, eat chakwe tiao, eat your mihun goreng and whatever. And your day start again, no? go back to samsara again. No? Oh, hot water, don't drink. I remember what brother Lim said. That's all you know, all right? And we are trapped here like this. We are trapped here like this, all right? So, um, you will have to ask ourselves, lah, basically, lah, um, what kind of samsara are we facing individually? If you are not sure, talk to someone. Have a group of friends. I have a good, very good group of friends, you know. Not necessary Buddhists only. I'm very fortunate to have a very wise Punjabi and a very wise Muslim. All right? They, they really practice in a religion, man. They're not nominal, not nominal Muslim or nominal Punjabi. They really understand their teaching. All right? And then when we talk uh, at that level, we don't use label, religious label anymore. We talk the essence of the understanding of that meaning. Example, if I do today, I go outside and have call my Punjabi friend and Muslim friend, right? I say, today we talk about Akaliko. The Punjabi will have some meaning of Akaliko in Punjabi term. The Muslim will have their, their uh, Islamic term for timeless. So Akaliko versus Muslim Akaliko versus Punjabi Akaliko. Then we talk and talk and talk, we don't understand each other because the terminology is different. And they will argue in the context of their own perspective, their own religious perspective, correct or not? We can talk whole day. We come away with disagreement. Maybe friendship will be problematic already. But if we talk about timelessness, effectiveness, effective immediately, if you understand deeply, use normal terminology, use normal meaning, then they say, yeah, correct also. Allah said like this, we must really appreciate the deep meaning not just the, 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 the word is the word in Arabic, but the meaning itself. A meaning can only be expressed in with sincerity is true practice. Drinking water go Islamic way or not? Go Buddhist way or not? Go Christian way or not? Drinking water is open cap and then pour into your mouth, correct or not? That is called practice. There is no other way to quench, quench your thirst. There is only one way, to drink the water, by practice. So if you practice religion, but you must go, you have to go into the essence. Alright? Use the essence in your practice. Internalize it, huh? then you see. Effective or not effective. Right? Okay. I'm going to give you some real life example. Huh? Okay? Uh, what? How these three characteristics of life uh, manifest in your modern world? Okay? Um, I don't know how many of you uh, use social media. I think all of you use social media. Okay? This is a real life example of Dukkha. No? <coughs> um, this I target the young people, la, but I unfortunately I don't see many young people here. That's another problem with our Dharma. Dharma Mid Sundays. Uh. People often experience dissatisfaction and anxiety from constant comparison with other curated lives in platforms like Instagram and, and, and Facebook. Okay? This is a dukkha in the form of mental stress and perpetual feeling of inadequacy. Have you followed somebody? I don't know, influencer. Have you followed? I think young people follow, like, old people never follow, right? Young people. Now, I, I'm bringing this up because I think you should talk to your young people, you know. Uh, especially girls, uh, notice girls. Uh, they follow certain influencers, then they tend to like want to do what the influencer want to do. Uh, the clothes, the makeup, right? Always look beautiful, you know. Sometimes I just, for the, for the sake of it, I want to understand what what's all this social media influencer is. Uh. 
I follow one, one girl, American. Wake up also so beautiful. The hair is a bit messed, la, but beautiful, you know. Then I was thinking, how come whole day like that one? So beautiful one, you know. Then someone go and snitch on her, say that. Where it got, la, that one is all show only. Before they do the, the recording, uh, already put makeup. Already plan what to do yesterday. I already plan next morning what I want to do. I want to do my morning wake up show, example. So they already like, you know, it's like natural lah. Oh, I just woke up, I go and brush teeth, you know. Then after that, I drink water. Then I want to see what clothes I want to wear. And that's it, five minutes of time gone. And people waste their time looking at these kind of things, you know. This kind of thing, so I was thinking, what's, what's the value in it? Huh? I don't know. Okay? But one thing sticks out. I notice uh, at every moment of the day, uh, that face is very beautiful. Uh. Your face, uh, the ladies. Uh, you go to work and you wake up, same or not? I ask you truthfully, uh, same or not? I think a bit not same, correct or not? At least you wash it. This one just wake up beautiful already, you know? Okay? So, so this, this kind of thing, uh, when you see that you cannot match what is seen on your, on your little phone, and then you feel like, hey, uh, how come he, she can do, I cannot do? And you try to chase it. Okay, you try to chase it, become like that. Right? And the more you try, the more you're not getting it, imagine how, what kind of frustration you get. This is not good. Okay? Then another one I noticed, this one pertaining to older people. Uh, YouTube cooking videos. Have you tried? They say it only take five minutes to prepare the dish, you know. Five minutes only, including cutting, washing, five minutes. I try, uh, cannot get five minutes. At least 15 minutes, correct? Have you tried? Huh? From from moment to take from the fridge uh, to the serving, you know. 15 minutes, wake up five minutes. And then you try. Try to cut down. Next day, nine minutes. Next day, eight minutes. Cannot. Then people tell me, ah, they want to edit already. Not possible. Eh? One lady from Pakistan said, I know, I'll teach you to make this dish only five minutes. Actually, one hour is required. Okay? So, all these things are not true. Eh? Alright? Not true. So, you no need to follow until like that. Okay? Then another issue is consumer culture. Every time new gadget come out, you go on to go and Go and look for it. If the gadget can use, use. Why must follow the, 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 the new style? There's no difference between iPhone 16 and iPhone 14, you know. Only a bit, maybe AI or the add up to that only. If we can use, you still can use, you still can browse the internet, isn't it? Okay? Another example of Anicca is the technology. You buy something already immediately obsolete. Right? Don't chase for new things because you're wasting money. If possible, uh, try to buy something uh, that is at least one generation behind. Still can use. No need. Okay? Because the price will drop a lot, one, you know. Your OLED TV, three years ago, how much? 65 inch OLED TV. Today, how much? Just three years ago, about eight, nine thousand, you know. Today can get for 1,006 already. Same quality. Okay? Anything electronic, uh, please, uh, brothers and sisters, don't buy immediately. You wait. No harm one, won't die one. You just wait a while only, okay? Then another thing is job, job hopping. Everybody now very scared to job hop because the, you try to hop here, hop there, suddenly no job for you. Scary, you know, because now AI taking a lot away of the job, you know. My brother is a graphic designer. He said, now nah, I use chat GPT for copywriting. I don't even need to pay. You know? After that, he just edit. Last time he has to pay money to people for copywriting and do translation. Now, no need, you know. Two jobs gone. The copywriter and the translator. Oh, so, think carefully. Huh? But this is, but then once you understand Anicca, you must know how to handle the situation yourself. Alright? Some people say, uh, is AI thing uh, no good. Lah. Right? But I say, AI is to empower you. Not make you become lazy. You have the power to buy a factor of 10 now. So instead of getting a real person assistant, example, uh, 
I can get maybe four or five people to help me just by using AI. Now I can dissect a meaning deeper. All right? Like just now I use a nobu to dissect the word akaliko. I think become a talk like this, you know. All right? So I become deeper in my understanding. My knowledge is richer. My experience is richer. Okay? In the end, I, I gain a lot as a person. Right? So don't say uh, Anicca is no good. Anicca is also an opportunity. Yes, you lose something. But go and learn something new so that you can gain something else. Don't say, oh, I'll die, lah. You know, I'm going to lose this, lose that. It's up to you. You want to stand still? The world changed already. Yes, you will sure lose one. But if you be observed enough and say, okay, things have changed. How can I learn to move with this change? Some people say, I cannot, lah. I'm old already. Hello, I did my first website when I was almost 45 years old, you know, not 20 years old. This Nobu I built only recently only in July last year. I'm almost 60 years old. One young boy from Inisi, Malaya, undergrad, come and tell me, brother, how old are you? Nearly 60. How can it be possible for you to do this? Wow, you insult me, I said. Old people cannot do, is it? I say like that. Oh, I don't mean like that. How you learn? How you know? He assumed I don't know anything because during my time, uh, he was 60 years old, uh, when I bought no computer, when I go in university, also no computer. The computer just started only. PC, XT, you know, those days. Right? No Windows yet. How can from a PC, XT gener generation can learn to do AI? I say, yeah. evolution, I said. I use one word, evolution. I go with time. I don't stay still. Okay? Then only I realize, then he only realize, uh, oh, learning no need, not by age, uh, learning by time. Uh. Yeah, because timeless. I follow this word akaliko a lot. Because Dhamma is timeless, therefore your ability to learn to evolve also timeless. It's only up to you whether you want to change or not. Okay? Then Anatta, some people don't want a picture in your, in your Facebook or Instagram. They put an avatar. How many of you are uh, now? I see cartoon, cartoon picture. Because you think uh, I'm not so handsome, I'm not so pretty, then why I put cartoon? Correct or not? So to me, it's that not that I want to see your handsome or beautiful face, I want to see your real face. Okay? Not handsome, so never mind. Not beautiful, so never mind. But what's the real you? Okay, what's the real you? I think that's more important. Right? So when you understand non-self, it manifests in the way you handle your social media also. Okay? Genetic engineering is another thing. Okay, we don't talk about that. Let's combine these three things together. Anicca, Dukkha, Anatta. Okay? Let's say smartphone. Every time you just buy a new smartphone, new model come out already. Then you say, ah yeah, I should have waited a few months. But you are the one who cannot wait one. The moment announcement come out, buy already. Right? Then after that, every time you have to chase, isn't it stressful? Then every time you read the news, oh, maybe next month, Apple 16A come out. Not, not 17, no, 16A. Wow, very stressful. Oh. What's this A? Ah? What's the difference between A and 16? Ah? Stressful already, correct or not? Then now all the things you put in the in the phone, pictures, okay, uh, the the videos we keep, the images we keep, all the conversation, all the WhatsApp conversation messages we keep, is that you? Is that you? Is that really you or not? Okay, what happens is the phone gets stolen, wiped clean. What happened to your life? Gone. Uh. Some people hold on, you know, as though uh, what's inside their phone, uh, it's so precious, you know. Without it, die one. Correct or not? Don't hold, don't, don't hold on too much because if you don't understand anatta, you, you become clinging, you become grasping, you become holding. Everything inside the phone is equivalent to you. That is why some people, a uh, little bit of accident in the car, as though like want to die, want to kill the other person. Little bit of knock only. Okay? And all this road rage. The person is not, not hurt also. Let's say two cars knock each other. I get hurt or not? No. 
my car dented a bit, yes, I have to pay money and, and do that, right? But why need to take a, a gun and go and shoot the other person? No need. Because you, you, you hold on to things so much, you extend yourself to your thing. You extend yourself to the phone, you extend yourself to the car. Anything happen to all these objects, uh, as though like you get hurt. You get what I mean? If you have an understanding of anatta, you know all this thing is impermanent. This is not me, this is not I. This is just something I can use to go from here to here, use to make a phone call, use to take a picture, that's it. If lost, never mind. We start fresh again. Okay? So this is uh, an example uh, of the three things, uh, how it, how, how it uh, affects you. Uh. Now, I give you this example to let you see uh, if you are too involved in your samsara, your personal self is extended to your things that you own, to your house, okay, to your car, to your phone. Anything happen to all these things, uh, you get very angry and you take revenge, example. Okay? That's how war starts. Lah. First, your phone, your car, your house, then your country. And that's how war starts between countries. If you hold on to your anatta so strong, you don't know how to see that you are non-self, you will manifest anger, hatred, ignorance in your yourself and also whatever you own, the machines that you own, the country, the land that you stay, and you use that uh, what call it, uh, equipment outside of you to fight with another person. Then how can like that, like that, there's no peace in the world already. Correct. So in order to stop all this, you have to look at yourself first. Huh? Yesterday, we had a gathering and be friends, uh, then my wife, somebody said, I, I come to your house many years already, uh, 10 years, nothing changed. My house, furniture no change, even tablecloth also no change. Then uh, my wife said, yeah, this guy, uh, very kiam siap one, say me, you know, never buy one. So I said, um, if it's broken, buy, uh, not broken, buy for what? Correct or not? And uh, if can use, use, because what we are throwing away is plastic, uh, the tablecloth is plastic, correct? And, uh, and the sofa is still okay, but we don't, not spoiling it, there's no hole, nothing, right? It's still comfortable. Uh, what can use, we use. Huh? What we cannot use, we throw away and buy a new one. Not, not consumed by season, consumed by necessity. Uh, then, then she go and let go some secret. Uh. This guy, uh, pointing to me, my wife, uh, he should, I think he never buy for 10 years. Uh. His couple, I uh, don't know that shirt, I think since some of it, uh, since he was, he was, when he was 17 years old, you know, still can wear, uh, because the father gave to him uh, when he was 17 years old. So that size still fits me now. Still wear the guy. To me, it's like, can wear what? Uh, just protect the body, isn't it? Huh? No need to change. So the point is this, if we don't chase, right, and you don't care what anyone say, nobody disturb you also. Ah, that's the thing. No one disturbs you, you know? Right? And you don't have this self-consciousness to say, I must look good when I go out. No need. I go out, I wear like that, then people say, oh, Brother Lim, how are you? Then we talk. He never say, why you still wear your shirt 10 years ago? Nobody ever said that to me. They say, how are you? How's your family? How's your children? Right? Things that matters, not what I, how I look. So the moment you brand yourself like that, uh, non-self kind of fellow, Life is easier, okay? I won't go into all this like that. So in conclusion, uh, all right, the unsatisfactoriness, impermanence, and selflessness that we observe in all conditioned things around us are a manifestation of the factors that bound, keep us in samsara, okay? All the things we extend ourselves, you know, what it means is like this, just now I said, uh, if I don't understand non-self, that means I'm a very uh, self-oriented person, a very selfish person. I will extend it to my property that I own, to the object that I own. Anything that happens to my object or property happens to me, and therefore I must take action. If I don't have that kind of thinking, I say, this is impermanent, this is non-self. 
it will break. Then it's not mine anymore. My phone is stolen. Fine, not mine anymore. But you take precaution, uh, of course, right? Make sure you remember all your password. Uh. A, lot of us, a lot of us forget password. Uh. After you lose your password, you die already. Everything get locked out. Bank locked out, everything locked out. Email locked out. Keep your password. Keep your password somewhere else. If possible, store in cloud. Okay? Buy something, store in cloud. These are the ways to do it. Lah. Store in cloud. Make sure you remember the password to the cloud. So. <laughs> then if you get lost, reactivate, deactivate, then reactivate again. This is manifestation of the virtual world, no? So you do not depend solely on one thing. This thing that means you're dead. Okay? No. If you got money, everything also can buy back again. Correct or not? Uh, so don't worry. No need to be so stuck up with things you own. No need. Just, no, this is impermanent. Gone is gone. Never mind. And I teach my children all like that. If you lose something, uh, I won't get angry. Please, I'll tell them. But try not to lose it all the time. Lah. Because it costs a lot of money you know, to buy again. If you lose by accident or by snatch thief, fine. We get a new one. Okay? So once we understand things like this, then we will bring the, then we can say how we can use the Dharma, alright? To look, to look into all these factors, okay? And then bring us away from this samsara. One last word. Lah. I, I think I want to use the word methodology, method. Long time ago, you heard of poison letter, no? Before social media, poison letter. Let's say somebody want to defame me, la, make, make me say bad things about me. La. What they do is what? Write a letter without signing, no date. Just say, whoever, to whom it may concern, this brother Lim is a fraud. He's a fake Dharma teacher. He teach nonsense. All his Dharma, he create himself. La. None from Buddha. No signature. Then he end up with true Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> okay? That's what he do? He photo stack thousands and go to the temple. One stack here, one stack there. Right? Then you, people like you all, don't know anything, go to the counter, take one copy. Ah, huh? brother Lim, like that one. So he come and listen to me and say, oh, yo, this guy talk nonsense or what, you know? Because the true Buddhist say, this guy is a fraud. Correct or not? Last time it's called poison letter using photo stack. In Malay, it's called surat layang. Right? Today, no more already, this poison letter. You know what they use? Facebook. They use Instagram, TikTok. Right? They write the letter, scan the picture, upload to TikTok, and they get avatar. <laughs> True Buddhist avatar, cartoon, to narrate. Oh, Brother Lim is a fraud, lah. True Buddhist say. Then suddenly you wake up, hey, tick, tick, oh, oh yeah, oh, this Brother Lim, ah, better don't go to his talk. Methodology have changed. But the principle is the same. Someone want to destroy you, make you uh, ill film, ill fame, correct or not? So the samsara element is there, correct or not? The samsara element is there. Somebody want to do something to you. But the method changed only. But then there is, uh, the Buddha says, if you observe not the method, but the, the essence of the, the process to defame you, don't look at the method, whether photostat or, or social media. Look at the method. The intention is to defame you. Who is this true Buddhist? Find out. Do investigation. Okay? Reach out to this person. And then engage. Discuss. Why defame me? Right? And defuse the situation. Using Dharma. Ah, like that. Hatred cannot be overcome by hatred. It is true loving kindness, metta. Correct or not? So instead of fighting back, you go to the source of the problem and then engage. So the Dhamma is timeless. Right? Samsara is also timeless, but bounded by time, according to your own individual circumstances. Once you understand yourself, you understand your own circumstances, you look for the Dhamma as a cure. The fragrance of the Dharma came from the founder himself. It cuts across, go against the wind in all directions, above, below, and across. Nothing can stop it. It is ever there. It is for you to use. 
only no, only now is that you need to tune in and find the Dharma for yourself. <laughs>